You smell that? That's the smell of a brand new adventure. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name's Defender, and welcome to Steam World Quest, The Hand of Gilgamech. Developed by Image Inform Games and released in 2019, Steam World Quest is the fourth, I believe it's fourth, entry in the Steam World series, which also features the titles Steam World Dig 1 and 2 and Steam World Heist. This is a turn based RPG which features a card battling system similar to games such as Slay the Spire, so. It's definitely an interesting combination, and it's gonna be an interesting game, so. Enough fiddling around, let's get started. Uh, sorry, Game 3, we're, uh. Where we're going, we're not gonna need you. Goodbye. Alright, uh, definitely we're gonna start a new game. Eh, let's stick with Knight. It says it's suitable for most players, and, and I am like most players. Is ready for bed, son. Oh, Dad, tell me a story first, please. Oh? You want to hear another tall tale from the high seas, do you? No, not another pirate story. I want to hear about dragons and knights in shining armor. Dragons, you say? Well, then we have to go way back to the age of heroes. When our world was still young and innocent, the gods grew born and forged a heart of evil and placed it in the chest of a behemoth. A true hero was called upon, and by his hand, the corrupted heart of the monster was torn out and buried where it could do no harm. Over the years, his heroic deeds fell into obscurity. Instead, Heroes of fortune spread across the land like a shadow. But there was still light to be found. Our story begins with two such lights. Two friends strolling through the forest in search of a mushroom. Chapter 1 the Knight and the Alchemist. Hey, visualizing is important. Well, dust is high in fiber, so... I guess it's a decent breakfast. Not with that kind of attitude. Those sure are words that you said. Uh, I'll take your word for it. Alright, so we're off on a quest for a mushroom. Surely this will be the only thing that we do today, and nothing else will happen. Many objects in the world, such as the mushroom patch ahead, can be interacted with. Move near the mushrooms and use the controls shown below to look at them. This is the Switch version, by the way, so I got button prompts. So just step near something and press A to examine it. Bye. 
Wow, you must be really hungry, Armilly. You can cut down certain things. Ah, evildoers! Perfect. I was starting to get bored. A coglin? Alright. Oh, now you've done it. All right. So, battles are fought using punch cards. Each turn you'll draw up to six cards. These cards represent abilities your heroes can use. You can choose up to three cards to play each turn. The cards will be lined up at the top of the screen. When you're happy with the cards you've selected, press the finish turn button. So, as you can see, we got a few options available to us. We can just perform basic attacks. We got some buffs. Uh, let's go with some buffs. If you want to see more information about a card, or really anything in particular, you can use the plus button to view your options. So we can see more information on our adversaries and on ourselves. These guys are pretty basic, they're just coglins, little bandits, nothing really that interesting. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Once you've chosen your cards, you will attack! That was very not nice of you. Okay, so this talks about the various types of cards. Strikes, upgrades, and skills. Strikes are shown by a little sword in the top left corner. Upgrades by a little wrench, and skills by a little diamond. Strike cards are just what they sound like, basic uncomplicated attacks that deal damage to your enemies. You know, a sword swing, a punch, that kind of stuff. Upgrade cards empower your heroes temporarily in some way. And strike cards uh, are basically, they're, they're your super moves. As your heroes use strike or upgrade cards, they'll build up steam pressure, or SP, which can be spent to play powerful skill cards. So if you look at the top of the screen, you can see we have three gears lit up, which means we have three skill points, or steam pressure, or SP. The A card's SP cost is in the top right, so we can cast Flame Wave if we want. We could also cast Flame Pillar or Brave Buster. Um, let's see. It should also be noted that the order you play your cards in matters, because you will gain SP based on what you do. So for example, if I were to suggest doing this, you can see that one of the cogs up is glowing. Uh, you will gain and lose SP based on the order that you play your cards in. So for example, I can gain one SP, which enables me then to do this. Uh, yeah, let's do this. So we create a temporary HP shield for our Millie, gain one SP, cast Flame Wave, and then Fire Pillar. Swanky. Skill cards are very versatile and powerful, but if you don't have enough SP, you can't play them at all, so manage your pool of SP wisely. So yeah, as you can see, some of our cards are grayed out because we do not have the SP necessary to cast them. Uh, this guy will go down with just a few basic attacks, so we'll just bash him with a book. Seems good to me. And for winning fights, you gain experience, just like most RPGs. We got some trashium scraps and some gold. It's like hurting a small tornado. How very descriptive. Alright. So, let's just keep on keeping on. So, how's everybody doing today? Ooh, treasure. After beating up ruffians fair and square, the champion deserves a proper reward. Well, I can't argue with that. Alright, so what do we have here? We got some repair vials. Recovery items can be used to heal your heroes or cure status conditions. They are a good way of dealing with challenges that you can't solve with cards alone, but supplies are limited. You can find recovery items in chests, by defeating enemies, or by buying them from merchants. 
Use recovery items outside of combat by going to the items menu and selecting recovery items. Your heroes are automatically revived and cured of negative status conditions at the end of each battle, so some items cannot be used this way. Use recovery items in battle by going to the battle menu and selecting recovery items. Recovery items used this way count as playing a card for the turn, so think carefully about the right time to use them. As you might have seen, you can only play three cards per turn. So, if you use one of your items, you'll only be able to use two other cards. Alright, sounds rudimentary enough. <laughs> this method works on anybody? This book is great. So this is about preemptive strikes. Foes will engage you if they see you. Gain an upper hand against them by pressing the indicated button when they are close enough to attempt a preemptive strike. This will cause your foes to begin the battle already wounded. It should be noted that even if an enemy walks into you, uh, they actually cannot gain a first strike, so you can only benefit from it. So Also, there's a secret over here with a power bangle. You found an accessory item. Before it'll do you any good, you must first open up the pause menu and equip the accessory in the equipment menu. Select the character you wish to equip it to and select the accessory slot to reveal a list of available items. Alright, so who do you want to equip this to? Increases both strength and magic power. Yeah, probably our Millie should use it. Alright, so we only have some repair vials, a few weapons. We don't have much. That is okay. As you can see, there are a couple of options locked to us right now, but don't worry, they will become available relatively soon, and boy are they going to be important. Gotcha! This is probably the, one of the most important parts of the system, redrawing cards. You can redraw cards in your hand up to two times each turn. Redrawing a card means that the selected card will be discarded and replaced by a new card from your deck. Discarded cards will eventually make their way back to your hand, so don't hesitate to use Redraw often to get rid of unplayable cards. And remember, if you don't play or redraw anything, your hand will not change. Alright, so let's see. Uh, this is a good hand, I think. Alright, so we have Bravado, which heals our Millie and raises her strength, so we're gonna use that. And... You know what, we're gonna go right for the Brave Buster. Actually, we could use it on this guy. And just take him out of the picture. Goodbye. Oh, we got a critical, too. As you can see, getting rid of enemies also gets rid of their cards. And as you might have noticed, their cards are turned over, so you cannot see what enemies are going to do. Uh, heroic Strike. Flame Pillar. Book Bash. That should take care of you. So yeah, as you can definitely see, Steam World Quest is a slower game than most RPGs, but that's because there's a lot more tactics to it. You gotta gotta use your brain a lot more, which I kind of like. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a fast-paced system, but you know, you can make the system however fast or slow as you want, as long as it's interesting. That's the critical part. Let's see, we can pull up a map with minus. Down more uh, twigs. Uh, let's go down. Hmm. <laughs> Heroes coloring handbook. These artfully majestic homages to the ancient heroes serve as a good place to sit down for a while and get some rest. Approach the statue to save your progress. Interact it to, with it to restore your hero's health. However, be aware that this also will respawn all nearby enemies. So, if you're looking to kind of explore without bumping into enemies, you're definitely going to want to heal yourself. Oh, hello, big guy. There we go. So, what do we have here? You are... Uh, let's see, I don't need another Bravado, so we'll get rid of it. Could use a Mana Barrier. Let's use that on Copernica. Let's 
tenacity. Raises your defense. All right. Annoying, but easily uh, take care of take of a bull. Wow, that is impressively bad. Uh, so you're just an ogre. Uh, yeah, let's generate more SP. We're going to get rid of Flame Wave because, uh, well, there's no other enemies to fight, so no need for multi-target skills. Bonk. Boink. Uh. All right. Um, let's go for flame pillars. Actually, yeah, that's what we want. This is gonna be big damage. Maybe. Oh, one HP. That's okay, though. You're dead. Alrighty. Oh, we leveled up. Our Millie's health went up by five, and Copernicus health went up by five. You love to see it. So what was this ogre guarding? A steel bracer. Alright. Um... Let's see, that increases health by a percentage base. You know what, we're gonna give that to our Millie, and Copernica can take the power bangle. All right, let's examine the statue and heal ourselves up. Now, because enemies infinitely respawn whenever you examine the statue, technically that means that you could grind infinitely, but I feel like the game is well-paced enough that you never really needed to grind. Let me put it this way. Whenever I ran into a problem in this game, it was never, oh, I need another level. It was, oh, I needed to adjust my strategy. Ah. I'm not quite sure that's how anything works, but... How do you eat breakfast, dessert, and brush your teeth? That's some impressive multitasking. All right. Clearly nothing bad will happen when we take this. Uh, hi. Do you mind if we borrow this? Gompfus. That is a name. Unsuspecting innocent mushrooms. All right, well, looks like we're going to have to educate you with sword swings. Damage comes in five elements, physical, fire, frost, storm, and arcane. A card's damage type is shown on the card. Some enemies have natural resistance or weakness to certain elements, and some cards can raise or lower elemental defense. Use the right element to maximize the damage you deal. So, with that information, uh, this is the boss of Chapter 1, Gomphus, who is very, very weak to fire. If only we had some fire skills. If only. So this fight's really just designed to teach you about when to use your cards. And also, you might notice that Gonfus has a few of those gears underneath his health bar. Enemies can also gain SP and use specific skills when their gauge fills. Unlike um, your characters, they will always gain one SP per turn. Uh, we're gonna wanna hold on to Flame Wave for later, so let's just, uh... Let's get a Mana Barrier going. Ah, poison. Poison will gradually sap the target's HP. As as it does in most video games. Fortunately, most conditions go away on their own after a few turns. You can review a list of all conditions from the compendium menu. So yeah, poison will fade away after a while, but uh, 
It'll eat up your HP while you're waiting, so, you know, not ideal. I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna see if I can't get a, uh, buff for our Millie before I go into the really big damage. Yeah, how is everybody doing today? Oh, you've raised your attack power. That's not good. Oops. If one of your heroes falls to zero health, that hero is scrapped. If all active heroes become scrapped, game over. Cards belonging to a scrapped hero become useless and waste space in your hand, so make sure to redraw those cards. Scrapped heroes are repaired after each fight, but health is otherwise not restored between fights. You can heal during battle using certain cards, but that can be tricky. Visit a hero statue or use a recovery item to restore health outside of combat. Okay, so what do we want to do? Um, I think it's big damage time, so we'll bravado, heroic strike, brave buster. Hope everyone's having a nice Friday. Oh, yeah. Ugh! That is decidedly not nice. Uh, mana barrier, heroic strike, brave buster again. Chop him! Alright, so when Gonfus's, uh SP is full, he will use Call Family, which summons these little guys. Thankfully, they are also weak to fire. Thankfully, we have a skill that hits everyone, so we'll use Flame Wave. Um, hmm. I want to save that for a l Or do I want to use that now? No, let's just go for damage. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's generate some SP and cast another mana barrier. Much better. Let's go with Bravado. Yeah, let's just pour out all the damage. Okay, that hit Copernica, that's good. Uh, yeah, just, just keep slashing. Just slash all day long. You get- everybody gets a sword swing to the face. Alright, call family. Hopefully we'll be able to draw a flame wave. There's a bra another bravado. Hmm, no flame wave. Unfortunate. That means we'll just have to, uh, take care of the shroomlings manually. That happens sometimes. Sometimes you just don't draw what you need. So you'll have to make do with what you do have. Yes. Attack boost. Alright, that's good for us. Mana barrier. Fire pillar, fire pillar. Oh, he's very close, which is good because we're uh, we're actually pretty uh, banged up ourselves. But eat this! Was there ever any doubt? Oh, our Millie's health went up by fifteen, and Copernicus's health went up by ten. Nice. Look at all that money. Oh, 
Well, yeah, but I don't think that meant with like a sword. Uh, it's so hard to find good help these days. Also, hello, Booble. As you can see, you get a percentage of the amount of treasure that you found in the stage. Of course, 100% means you found everything. After a refreshing stroll in the forest, our unsuspecting companions make their way home to the village of Goose Bucket. All in good time for some healthy stew. Also, hello, Booble, and thanks for lurking. The village of Goose Bucket. That's a strange name for a village, Goose Bucket. How did they even get that name? Is this where that angry goose from Untitled Goose Game lives? Because if that's the case, then uh, we're, we're going to be in for quite an adventure. Oh. Alright, guess we'll just uh, approach and see what's inside. Oh, hello. <laughs> We've been picking mushrooms for ancient gods. Obtained a shout card and a creeping cold card. Ruckus? That can't be good. You received a batch of brand new punch cards. How nice. To use them in battle, you need to pay a visit to the deck building screen and put them in your punch card deck. So this is probably... The most important part of SteamWorld Quest, your deck building. The deck building screen lets you edit your hero's punch card decks. To the left is a folder containing all of your collected cards. Right now your collection is pretty meager, but don't worry, you'll find many more punch cards on your adventure. Like, a lot more punch cards. On the right is the hero's deck of cards available in battle. You can add cards to the deck by selecting them in your card folder, and remove cards from the deck by selecting them in the deck list. Each hero must have exactly eight cards in their deck. No more, no less. Keeping your deck up to date is key into being successful in battle, so be sure to check out this screen whenever you find a new card. All right, so what do we have to work with? We have, our Millie has Bravado, Heroic Strike, Brave Buster, and Shout. Bravado increases our Millie's strength and also heals her a small amount. Heroic Strike deals physical damage to one foe. Brave Buster deals physical damage to one foe, but is much stronger. And Shout lowers all foes' strength for three turns. Now, as you can see, you can care... Depending on which card it is, it will determine the number available in your folder. So, for example... Uh, let me unequip everything. We have four Bravado cards, four Heroic Strike cards, four Brave Buster cards, and two Shout cards. This is the maximum of each card you can have in your deck. So, for example... We can't add any more Heroic Strikes, even if we wanted to. It's important to keep that in mind. Uh, so let's see, I'm definitely gonna include all of those, though. I'll include one Bravado. Definitely two Brave Busters. And we'll fill the last one with a Shout, why not? Alright, so Copernicus cards are Mana Barrier, which grants one ally a damage shield, basically temporary health. Book Bash is a physical attack. Creeping Cold deals frost damage to two different foes. Fire Pillar deals fire damage to one foe, hits three times. And Flame Wave deals fire damage to all foes. So... Let me get rid of a Book Bash. We'll tag, we'll tag in a Creeping Cold. Yeah, this looks fine to me, I think. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, let's see, we didn't gain any other equipment, which is fine. Alright, so let's go see what that ruckus is about. Smash up some boxes, get some gold. Sometimes when you break objects in the environment, you'll get money. 
So, always break things. Professional tip. Oh, the village is on fire. Very bad. In a hurry? You can use the control shown below to move faster while exploring, and battles will move faster too, so... Thankfully, you can sprint in this game, which is very nice. A few hours? How long have we been gone? Alright. Well, this isn't good. Oh, very bad. Ugh. Ah, nothing like an invading army to start the day off right. Oh yeah, these two guys. These guys are actually a reference to uh, Final Fantasy VI. As you can see, their names are Budge and Wiggs, a play on uh, Biggs and Wedge, who were two of your uh, starting companions in Final Fantasy VI. References! <laughs> Alright. Let's see, we got ourselves... Just some guards. They're weak to electricity, but we do not have any storm cards. Uh, so we'll just need to make them weak to swords. <laughs> yeah, this is good. Ah, counter stance. Okay. This means that if we uh, attack one of them, they might, emphasis on might, hit us with a counter attack. So, we're just going to switch targets. Feel the sting of a sword blow to the head repeatedly. You should probably get that looked at. Lower our strength. Very not nice of you. If you don't like it, we're going to lower your strength. Um, oh, Shout. Go with... Fire Pillar. Actually, there's only going to be one enemy left, so Creeping Coal doesn't benefit us. And we'll Mana Barrier Copernica. Uh. You call that an attack? Pathetic. Uh, let's see, no need for Flame Wave. Or the other flame wave. My really melee strength is down, so I think we'll just uh, bash and and flame pillar. Whoever said sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me has clearly never intercepted a book to the face. Yeah, we're just gonna brave buster you down twice. So long, chump. All right. I think there are more pressing matters to attend to, our Millie. Oh, Galio, hello. What the heck's going on here? Hmm. 
No, we don't want your fresh buns. Very interesting, but we have uh, we have more pressing matters to attend to. <laughs> oh, don't be that way, Galio. This home buddy craftsman struggles to find good reason to leave his mother's basement. He won't offer assistance freely, and he may bicker and bawl, but when it comes to the crunch, you can always trust him to be there for a friend. All right, so we have three party members now. And we can look at his deck. So he's got some steam punches, some mens, and some and a wrecking ball skill. Uh, yeah, this is fine for now. I guess I should quickly discuss what each character's archetype is. Armelia is all about big physical damage. She's very straightforward, just hit the enemy real good, which, you know, I can always appreciate. But that means that if the enemy resists physical or worse, nullifies it, uh, she's not going to be very useful. So if you need something that's more complicated, she is not your character. Copernica uses a wide variety of magic, which means she can strike a bunch of elemental resistances, as well as has some interesting support skills. But physically, she's weak, both in terms of physical damage as well as HP. Galio is your support character. He packs the strong healing skills and buff skills. He is capable of dealing damage, but it generally requires a lot of SP as well as setup, so he's better off sticking to, you know, keeping the team alive. He also has a lot of HP. Alright, so let's head into town after we take this treasure. Found a scout badge. Ah, it increases health, strength, and magic. Well, let's give that to Galio, because he has no equipment yet. Whoops. Actually, is there something over here? No, I think the secret is somewhere else. Hello, Baker. Baker Eclair. Well, that's a good name for a baker. Oh. The tavern, okay. Yes, very safe. Now, right, let's go over here first. Oh, hello, jerk. Uh. I greet you with my sword. You have gained the ability to use Heroic Chains. If you play at least three cards from the same hero, regardless of type in the same turn, you'll perform a Heroic Chain, which adds a follow-up effect at the end of the chain. The effect depends on the weapon the hero has equipped, so look around for weapons with chain effects that match your playstyle. Alright, so... Um, actually, we can show off what our Millies is. So if you play three cards from the same character, you'll gain an extra effect. In our Millie's case... It is Lionheart, which deals a little extra damage and also heals her. It's basic, but it gets the job done. Alright, and that enables us to take care of that mage. Oh yeah, they also heal each other, which is really annoying. You can use recovery items in battle by accessing the battle menu at any time during your turn and selecting recovery items from the list of options. You can also inspect foes to learn more about their weaknesses and active effects, as well as retreat if a battle isn't going your way. Although retreating means that you forfeit playing cards that turn. Alright, so what do we want to do this turn? Um, Wrecking Ball is too expensive. And there's only one enemy, so Flame Wave is useless. Uh, let's see. You have no resistances, which is good. I think we're just going to generate some SP. Yeah, this will work. Ow! Alright. Um... Don't need that. Actually, I'm not even really sure why I'm bothering to think of things, because this guy's going to die anyway. Hello, Snyder Man. We're glad to have you here. Uh, you just watched us beat up a wizard. Because wizards deserve it. 
Oh, and everyone leveled up. Our Millie's strength went up by four, Copernicus magic went up by six, and Galio's health went up by 20. All right, so what do we have over here? Ooh, we got some loot. Is there something over here? Yes, there was a, a hay bale here that we could knock down. So depending on the kind of treasure chest that you find, it'll determine what's inside it. These golden chests have cards in them. Shields up for Galio. Raises one ally's physical defense by two grades for three turns. I like that. I like defense. <laughs> Shocker, considering my name. Um, hmm. Get rid of some steam punches and replace them with shields up. We'll keep everything else for now. Hello. We'll take care of him. Yes. Hide from the fire in a in a hay bale. <laughs> Great idea. Exactly my thought, Galio. Well, if we can, you know, stop the invasion, uh, they won't burn to death horribly. Oh, I found a barrier gear. What does that do? Vastly raises physical defense when hero is brought below 30% health. Okay, let's give that to Copernica. She could use some defense. All right. All right, so we're back here. Um, oh, break this. I don't think there's anything over here. Nope. Let's just go forward. Sup, evil doer? All right, so we just got two guards. No big deal. Um, hmm. Don't want to keep that. That's really expensive. You know what? I'm gonna trash it. Also trash that. Too expensive. That's better. Um. Mana Barrier, Copernica, Heroic Strike, no, Steam Punch, Void Soldier. We'll use Creeping Cold, because we can strike both of them with one action. Alright, so you're going to counter, which is good. Uh, I didn't want... I. Didn't want that top guy to do that. So we're gonna bravado. Heroic strike. Brave Buster. And you're dead. Have a nice day. Oh wait, you can't, cuz you're dead. Alright, we got lucky with no counter attack. Uh let's see, I think. Let's see, I think our melee strength boost is going to persist for another turn, so why don't we see if we can't get some support skills. That counts as a support skill. Alright, let's, let's increase Galio's defense, because I'm going to have him attack. Mend yourself. And punch. So Galio's chain is Guardian, which heals the entire party and increases their defense one grade for that turn. Oh, there's a counter. Thankfully, we boosted our defense, so it deals less. And we actually just heal it right back up. We lowered our strength. That's no big deal. Yeah, just gonna hit you with a sword a whole bunch of times, and you're gonna die, because that's because generally people die when they're hit with a sword a lot. I'm not sure if you knew that, but uh, they do. And, and don't go out and... Try that at home, you know. Just, just take my word for it. You don't need to, you don't need to test that theory out. It's, it's been well documented <laughs> that swords kill people. Oh, we got a mage. Okay, we definitely want to take care of you first. Um, too expensive. I'll keep the heal. I might need it. I'm right, gonna shout. Shout, let it all out. And then we're just gonna hit the mage a bunch. I cast sword. Counter stance, don't especially care. Oh good, you didn't heal yourself. I appreciate that immensely. Um... 
No, not another wrecking ball. I'm actually gonna get rid of a mend. I need some more damage. Actually, no, I should buff your I should buff Copernicus defense first. Uh, that guard my counterattack. Yeah, there's the counterattack. <laughs> Look at me be being all big brain. Don't worry, that will not last very long. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, let's see. How do I want to uh you still have counter, so let's not do that. Get you a mana barrier. Book bash, fire pillar. Copernicus chain is barrier field, which grants everyone temporary health. It's Honestly, probably one of the strongest things you can do in the entire game. Like, it's really good. Look at all that temporary health we just generated. Oh, a counter stance, huh? That won't help you very much when you're dead. Um, hmm. I don't want to Brave Buster, that guy. That's a waste. Oh, we'll just Creeping Cold. That works. I would like to heal at some point, though, but we got temporary health. That should be fine for now. Yeah, more temporary health for everybody. All right. Let's speed that up a little bit. Another Intimidate, huh? How very threatening. And by threatening, I mean not at all. Uh, let's mend Copernica. Because again, you cannot heal outside of battle without using items or stopping by a statue. So, if you have the ability to heal yourself before a fight ends, you should absolutely do so. And Brave Buster. Excellent. Oh, we're so close to another level up. Let's see if we can't get into one more skirmish. Hello. Uh, yeah, I think I could have gone my whole existence without knowing that, thanks. Ugh. All right, so what's in this chest? Gigaton Punch. Deals 515% of strength as physical damage to one foe. Combo with our melee deals an additional 200% strength. Some cards are stronger when played together with a card from another hero. This is called a tag team combo. Cards that have tag team combo effects have an icon corresponding to the other hero on the card. The card's detailed description also explains what bonus you get. To activate the tag team combo bonus, simply play any card from the indicated hero before the card with the tag team combo effect in the same turn. I think, you know what, we're going to... I'm gonna get rid of Wrecking Ball. And we're just gonna Gigaton Punch. Just gonna, just gonna punch things real hard. <laughs> it can be solved with punching. Alright, what's in this box? Ah, some repair vials, excellent. By the way, you do need to examine the statue to heal yourself, so don't think you're healed just by walking by it. I've, I've seen many an adventurer make that mistake. It does not end well for them, let me tell you. Uh, let's see. Yeah. This is fine, let's go. Excuse me, are you a canary driving a suit of armor? Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, we haven't heard of him.
Yeah, as long as with all your guts. Okay, so how do I want to do this? Um, so this is Captain Canary. He is... They're weak to electric, but unfortunately we don't have any storm cards, so don't worry about that. Um, I think... I actually drew all of my expensive cards first, which I dislike. You know what? I'm going to get rid of Mend. And Flame Wave. Yeah, this will work. Uh, get some mana barriers going, and then I guess just start hitting them. Ah, drive-by, which hits everybody. Unfortunate. I dislike that immensely. I feel like it's cheating. Um, let's get some bravado going. And a brave buster. Oh, that's not good. All right. How do we want to do this? Let's see. Copernicus has been marked, which is not good. So we're going to definitely shield up on her. Uh, let's see. I definitely want a card to buff that up. I think I'm going to get rid of Brave Buster. Yeah, I think we're just going to do this. So Sapping Strike both deals damage and heals, which is unfortunate. Okay, so he's gonna... Captain Canary's gonna hit us with something big. Alright, you know what? This might be a good time for a Gigaton Punch. I'm gonna shout. Heroic Strike. Gigaton Punch. Withstand this if you can! Alright, that's a good hunk of uh, damage. Marked. Call the weak. That's an arcane hit, which uh, unfortunately ignores defense because it's magical based. Right, you know what? I'm just going to punch a bunch and then we're going to mend Copernica. And get a guardian out of the bargain. Right, thankfully, we were able to shrug that off. It's really boosted up because of the uh, barrier gear we gave her, which is good. Creeping Cold doesn't benefit us. Um, need more SP for that. I think this will work. As you can see, you really gotta think through your options more, which I like. This is, I said this before, but this is definitely a slower paced turn-based RPG. Let's see, let's go with Punch. Copernica more defense. I don't need both Gigaton Punches, that's too expensive. And we'll just go for a shout, I think. The Thinking Humans RPG, yes. But that's what make it, makes this game stand out. Okay, uh, let's mana barrier Pernica again. Heroic Strike, Gigaton Punch. Oh, yeah. Call the weak, ow. All right, everyone's at about half strength, which is not ideal, but uh, we do what we can. Yeah, that's good.
Booyah! Alright, what now? I'm kinda tempted to hold on to that. No, I'm gonna get rid of it. That's useless. That, that'll work. Uh, let's mana barrier, book bash, and flame pillar. So that we can get everyone a mana barrier. Also, Sapping Strike only regenerates HP if Captain Canary deals damage to a character's actual HP total, not their temporary health, which is very nice. Uh, get rid of Flame Wave. Uh, heal our Millie. That's better. Defense up for everybody. Our melee's been marked. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna get rid of a mend. Yes. No mana barrier. Uh, mana barrier yourself. That'll work. So yeah, you can start to see how, like, Mana Barrier is really stinking good. Um... Alright. This is how we're gonna finish things off. I'm okay with this. I'm gonna use both Brave Busters. Actually, no. I'm going to hold on to one. Because I might need the extra SP for a Gigaton Punch. If we happen to draw one. Nope. No Gigaton Punch. But that's okay. We'll just... We'll just hit you with the sword a few more times and we'll win. Well, see you later. And everyone leveled up. Our Millie's health went up by 35, Copernicus' health went up by 35, and Galio's strength went up by 6. Yeah, I feel like that's more important. And that's the end of Chapter 2. With relative safety restored to the village of Goose Bucket, our expanded ensemble set off for the local chapter of the Heroes Guild to find out what the heck is going on. You can now choose to revisit previous chapters from the screen in order to collect treasure you might have missed or gain more experience from finding monsters. When you're ready to continue, simply choose the latest available chapter to continue the story. So we're off to Chapter 3, off to see the heroes. Chapter 3. Off to see the heroes. Yeah, we can't just, like, leave the town without any kind of security. <laughs> what do you have against apples? What, are you secretly a doctor, Galio? Oh, wait, how does a robot get stung by bees? Well, I guess by robot bees. <laughs> I guess that works. Alright, so we're off. But of course, you should always go immediately back the way you came. Because there might be some loot. 
found loaded dice. Loaded dice increases a character's luck. Uh, let's see. You know what? Let's give it to the person with the best luck. I think that's probably best. Robies. I hate those things. Oh, it's that wagon from before. All right, let's go inside. It wouldn't be an RPG if there wasn't a store to examine. Well, I guess technically it could be an RPG, but who doesn't want to spend their money on some on some fat loot? So, I like our Millie. Just <laughs> obsessed with swords. Alright, so... The Mysterious Traveling Merchant can provide a number of services. Besides buying new equipment and supplies, you can also create new cards for your heroes, as well as upgrade existing ones. The Merchant's inventory grows over time, so check in with her whenever you run across her wagon on your adventures. Alright, so what could we buy? We could buy some recovery items, including revive kits, which allow us to revive scrapped heroes in battle. But we'll be sure to acquire some as we go along. We could buy another Steel Bracer. Not really necessary. We can also sell stuff, which we don't really need to, so we won't. This is the most important feature, crafting cards. From the craft card screen, you can create new cards by spending materials. Materials are typically found as rewards for defeating enemies in the wild. When crafting a card, you will get between one and four copies of that card, depending on the card. You can still choose how many copies you actually want to play with. Craftable cards can't be acquired by any other way, and new cards will be unlocked for crafting as you progress the story. So be sure to check out the shop again when you get to a new location. So let's see. Our Millie's two cards are to victory. Which raises all ally strength by one grade for three turns. It's pretty good. And intercept. Which deals 220% of strength as physical damage to one foe. And has a 40% to make them flinch. Which means that uh, an enemy basically loses the next card that they can use. Some enemies are capable of playing more than one card per turn. Such as Captain Canary. So... Flinch would only get rid of the first card in that instance, but still, Flinch is good. But we cannot make anything. As you can see, you need gold as well as the correct materials to craft a card. Uh, let's see. Copernica can get Searing Lash, which deals 90% of magic as fire damage to one foe. Or Brain Freeze, which deals 35% magic damage, magic as frost damage to all foes and lowers their magic by one grade for three turns. Uh, let's see. Galio has Miracle Worker, which raises one ally's healing power by two grades for three turns. Poison, which inflicts poison on one foe for three turns. And Provoke, which taunts one foe and raises Galio's physical defense by one grade for three turns. Basically, taunt means that victim will always target whoever taunted it. Uh, let's craft Searing Lash. And Poison. Excellent. Alright, so now we have to put them into our deck. Let's see. I'll keep Flame Wave because I might like to hit multiple enemies. You know, we're going to get rid of Book Bash because Searing Lash is a strike, but it uses magic. So unless we find enemies that are resistant to flames, uh, it will just deal more damage. What else would I like to use? Uh, let's go back to... No, you know what? We already got enough fire. Let's equip another Creeping Cold, just to make sure we're kind of spread out on our elements. Galio can now Poison. Honestly, Poison will probably be better for us, because Gigaton Punch just costs so much SP. Yeah, this is good. Uh, our Millie got no new cards for you, so we'll just stick with what you got. Alright, off to the Apple Orchard. Oh, hello. There's one of those robot bees. Or as this game likes to call them, uh, Drill Bee. They are very weak to frost. Hmm. And it just so happens we have some frost cards. Uh, yeah, let's just shout bravado. Heroic Strike. Ow. Ah, Hyper Evade. 
As you can see, that will make uh, that drill be almost impossible to hit. No, no, I said almost, but it's definitely not worth like trying to actually target it. So, I think we're just gonna focus on this guy. Yeah, this'll do. Not to be confused with B drill. I see what you did there. Man, could you imagine if bees in the real world had, like, drills for tails instead of stingers? That would be so much worse. Yeah, I think it's just time to punch a bunch. And I'm gonna poison you. Because I can. There we go. Oh, that reminds me of another thing I should mention. Uh, in your analysis on enemies, you can see that they have condition immunities. That, uh, s like, demon face there symbolizes that they are immune to Berserk. But thankfully, you can use this to check to see if a status effect is even worth using on an enemy, because if they resist poison, well, there's no reason to use poison on them. Now is there? Now, normally I'm an advocate for protecting the bees, but I think in this case we can make an exception. Uh, okay, let's go to the left. Ah, more bees, excellent. Oh, I didn't get the first strike, oh well. Now let's just start hitting things. Swords, they're like a sharp fly swatter. Oh, Flame Wave is actually pretty good here. Yeah, let's just go for some poisons. Uh, I'm gonna poison you, because your HP is already low, so if you go into Hyper Evade, we might be able to get rid of you. Yeah, this'll work. There's a Hyper Evade, and there's another Hyper Evade. Alright, so you're not dead, which is fine. Uh, defense up. Defense up. Sword Swing. Again, with the buzzing storms, I dislike that immensely. Alright, so you've been poisoned, but thankfully your uh, Hyper Evade is gone. Uh, uh, mm, creeping cold. Heroic Strike, Brave Buster. Oh, well the poison will kill you. One HP, really? You could have just cranked it up one little bit for me, and of course you're gonna hyper evade, but that's okay. We can just throw all of our attacks at you and uh, hope we hit something. I'm gonna try and mend and see if I can't get some HP out of this. Oh, you just died. Okay. Well, well. The one time I actually wanted you to miss. Alright, our melee strength went up by 6, Copernicus strength went up by 6, and Galio's health went up by 55! That's impressive. We got the Focus card. Raises Copernicus magic by 1 grade for 3 turns and grants 1 additional redraw the following 2 turns. That'll probably be more useful in a boss fight, so uh, let's see if we can't find one, eventually. No, this is fine for now. Oh, you can see some people playing chess in the background, or some kind of board game. Is 
So yeah, you should, you should try to always look at the side of the screen, because that's usually where the developers like to hide their secrets. Oh, we got some guards, huh? Okay. At least I landed my preemptive attack this time. Let's go for maximum damage. Ooh! Ooh, that was spicy! You're just dead! Man, that luck boost was really nice. Okay, how do I want to do this? Definitely gonna want to defend Copernica. Let's go for Steam Punch. I'm gonna save the poison because uh, one of these guys might put up a counter stance. And poison will let us target them without, you know, the, the risk of a counter stab. Which, you know, is generally something you don't want. Intimidate, that's fine. Hmm. No counter stance. Okay. It's your funeral. Uh, we're gonna shout. I'm gonna get rid of Flame Wave. It's too expensive. And we're just gonna punch. I I'm just I'm just gonna punch. There's a counter. Uh, let's see, just launch a poison. Yeah, this'll work. Another counter stance, that's not too bad. The only issue is that both of them have counter stance now, so I think I'm gonna poison you first. Uh, mana barrier our Millie. And then, this heroic strike. Again with the intimidate, I dislike that. All right, mana barrier yourself. Now we're just gonna double creeping cold, I think. No. Yeah, just double creeping cold. We run the risk of being countered four times, but that's a risk I'm willing to take. Or we could get countered zero times. That's okay with me. I have no qualms about that. See, that'll just straight up kill. Let's see if I can't get a healing card. Nope, no healing. Then uh, we'll just take care of you. That's That works for me. Yeah, you can't counter me if you're dead. You didn't think about that one, did you? Adventure! Uh, let's go down. Take that, bees. Let's see, let's let's give our Millie the defense boost. Uh, uh, Searing Lash, Creeping Cold. With Creeping Cold, the uh, second target that you hit is chosen randomly, but you can choose who you hit first with it, so... Take advantage of that. Hyper Evade. I definitely want to shout. Uh, no, let's Flame Pillar Poison. No, actually, I should Flame Pillar Poison the bottom one, because it's weaker. 
That's all right, I missed. Or I missed the top one. Because, yeah, even uh, status effects can be dodged via Hyper Evade. Um, let's see, Steam Punch, Poison that one, Creeping Cold. I missed the second one, but that's okay. I took care of the bottom one. Please stop attacking everyone. That's very rude and inconsiderate of you. All right, bravado. Honestly, much as I'd rather not do this, I think I'm just going to have to. Alright, Hyper Evade, that's fine. That actually buys me a turn to heal myself. Uh, Steam Punch, at least try to hit something. Mend. Definitely mend Copernica. So I think I asked this previously, but I don't know if anyone's around, so I'll ask it again. How is everybody doing today? Hope everyone's having a nice Friday afternoon. Uh, let's see, I definitely don't need that. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go for mana barriers. Hanging in as much as possible? Well, that's better than not hanging in. Yeah, your precious little buzzing storm won't hurt us now. Uh, let's see. Go for mend yourself, Galio, and we'll just we'll just chop you to bits. All right. everyone leveled up. Armelie's health went up by 50, Copernicus' magic went up by 8, and Galio's magic went up by 10. Alright, so let's see what was so precious over here. Hmm, is this the way to go? No, this is the way we need to progress. Okay, that's fine. I came the correct way first, which is interesting. So, of course, we need to now immediately go the incorrect way. Uh, let's see. Just, just greet you with a sword swing. Oh, goody, more mages. Awesome. Hmm. I want a poison. Poison's good. I'm going to bravado. Heroic strike. No, you know what? I'm going to try to just... Take these guys out as quickly as I can, because uh, I don't want them building up their SP. So yeah, the whole not being healed between fights is uh, not great. Don't heal yourself. Why are you doing this to me? Mm, okay, then. Alright, you know what? Got an idea. Get rid of poison. Flame wave might actually be good here. I don't want to get rid of mend. I don't want to get rid of any of my cards. I'll get rid of flame pillar. That's not what I wanted. <sighs> okay, I gotta take care of this bottom guy as quickly as I can. Uh, mana barrier. And a barrier yourself, I guess. Maybe a crit would be nice. No, but that's pretty close. Strength down, that's not good. That's okay. 
That might not deal enough damage, because your strength is dropped. Okay, it's gotta be Flame Wave. Then... I just gotta punch these mage's lights out. One down. That's fine. That's perfect. That's not. Okay, so next turn, you're gonna use your big move. Get rid of poison. Get rid of creeping cold. I'll just drew another one. Okay, uh, shout, heroic strike, brave buster. We're just gonna have to do the best that we can. Counter stance, fine. Intimidate, fine. Void fire, which strikes everybody. Hmm. No, I need to uh, generate some mana barriers. The mana barrier yourself first, because we might score a counter hit. All right. All right, no counter, good. And now everyone gets temporary health. Another counter stance. Okay, your counter stance is gone, which is good. Mend. Uh, mend our Millie. Yeah, as you can see, it's actually pretty tough. You know, if you, you gotta think through all your options, which I like. Once again, you have another stupid counter stance. Um, <laughs> All right, you know what? Mana Barrier or Millie. Brave Buster. Heroic Strike. Good, there's the counter protection. Definitely don't need a flame wave. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go for um, Galio's chain just to get a little more HP. Uh, that looks good. Another intimidate. That's totally all right. It means you're not hitting me. Yeah, now you're just gonna eat sword for breakfast. Sword. It's high in iron. All right. There's some loot. Found 300 gold pieces and the cleave card deals 425% of strength as physical damage to one foe. If the foe is scrapped, any excess damage will be dealt to all other foes. That might be good. It costs a lot, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, let me check my map. I'm pretty sure we found everything, so I'm gonna go actually go back to the wagon and see if there are any other cards I can craft.
craft. Oh, I can. Okay. What would I like to make? Let's make to victory. Because I like strength boosts. That's it. That's all we can do, which is fine. Okay, so if that's the case, I'm going to take care... Take rid of... Going to get rid of bravado, because to victory buffs everyone in the party, which is good. Um... Hmm... Do I want another one of those? No, that's fine. You know what, I'll equip another shout. Hmm. I'm gonna get rid of my flame pillar and instead go with focus. And as for you, Galio, um... You look okay for right now. Alright, so let's go back to that statue. Because we very badly need some healing. One last check to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Doesn't look like I am. Alright, heal me up, statue. I'm not going to ask how a statue heals me, but I'm just, I'm just going to take the healing and be grateful for it. Oh, hello. Drill Queen. Don't you mean Sting? Alright, so this is the boss of Chapter 3, the Drill Queen. Weak to Frost. Alright, but she's basically just a bigger, meaner, you know, Drill Bee. So, I think... Poison. Yeah, we're just gonna go for it. Ah, I see she summoned reinforcements, okay. Thankfully we resist that for right now. Oh, this is a good time to shout and let it all out. See, she takes a while to generate more SP to summon more minions, so if we can take them out quickly, we should be fine. There's the Hyper Evade. Thankfully, the poison should continue to kick in. Yep, just like that. Okay, so... Um, poisoning the small drill bee seems unnecessary. You know what? I'm just going to uh, defend up and do this. Alright, that's one. And we even killed the other one. Now that's value right there. See, your poison has faded away, which is okay. Uh, I think we're just going to try and generate some SP. So, mana barrier, poison, heroic strike. Oh, defense drop. That's less than ideal. I think it's time for a strength boost. That's the big damage. Alright, summon more bees. Ooh! Focus time. Alright. Uh, let's creeping cold one of the drill bees, and we'll just brave buster. The faster we can uh, take them out of the picture, the more we'll just be able to focus on the queen. Yeah, that was a little bit of overkill, but that's okay. I just really wanted that one dead in particular. Hyper evade, annoying. 
Not the end of the world. Shout. Oh, let's man a barrier Galio. Yeah, this is good. Gonna keep trying to generate that SP. Oh, interesting. You spent that immediately. Okay. Hmm. That's fine with me. I'm actually going to get rid of Shout. Also, I love this battle theme. This it, it, this is the boss battle theme, and it's got a nice rock edge to it. Gives it that nice intensity that the fight needs. Another Hyper Evade, that's annoying. Hmm. Feels like such a waste to use Brave Buster on that, but... Well, no one said we had to. Let's focus. Heroic Strike, and let's heal up. Yeah, let's heal Copernica. Time for another shout. I think I'll hold on to it. Uh, just heroic strike, brave buster, and shield yourself, Galio. I'm gonna hold on to flame wave. That might come in handy. Uh, shield, Copernica, mend yourself. Punch. Oh, not again. All right, here comes a poison. Oh, you don't have that magic boost. Let me see if I can't find the magic boost. Um, no, we'll get rid of mana barrier. As much as that might seem like absurd. Hmm. Nah. Nah. We can do this instead. By the way, according to my OBS, it says that I'm getting frame drops, but um, I'm not seeing it adversely affected at all on my Twitch stream, so um, I don't know if it's just my system is working properly or what, but uh, I don't know. Okay, so how do I want to do this? I want to use Flame Wave now. Uh, choices, choices. No, we're going to do this. Goodbye, Flame Wave. It turns out we actually didn't need you. Another Hyper Evade, that's fine. Let's get that strength boost out. Yeah, we'll just Brave Buster you. See, does the stream seem like nice and smooth for you all? Cause I just saw a frame drop, but it was only like eight. 
Like, it was barely even a blip. So, I don't know if that's actually affecting anybody. At least I hope it isn't. Oh, it is smooth? Excellent. That's what I like to see. Okay. Fine on my end. That is good to hear. Computers just... Again, just... Any good technology is almost... In indistinguishable from magic. Uh, is there any way I can kill you? Yes, if I look for the right cards. Is that enough? Definitely not. Alright. We're just gonna go for the thing that, uh... Deals the big damage. Yeah, this'll do. <laughs> Is it necessary? No, not at all, but it'll get the job done. Oh, so close to another level up. Oh, well. Okay. Well, that was easy enough. The heroic fields of fairways. It looks like a golf course. Probably because it is a golf course. But it's the golf course of destiny. Well, this looks like the guild. Let's go see where these slackers are up to. Well, that's rude. Also, that is a really big gumball machine in the background. Can never be left unguarded. All right. Huh. Yes, I see that you've clearly begun working on repairing this place, obviously. <laughs> it was really dark! Wait, the new office comes with a massage chair? Man, someone's moving on up in the world. You, you did hear the part where this would not have any guild recognition, correct? Hungry golfers? Oh, gophers. That makes more sense. You know, you can eat and walk. It's possible to do more than one thing at once. <laughs> or paying rent. Obtain the Aspiring Hero card. Raises our melee strength by one grade for three turns. Two grades if she is below 50% of her maximum health, and three grades if she is below 
After a nice deliberation with acting guildmaster Bardamax, the trio head out on the heels of the evil Void army to rescue the captured guild heroes. But we could, we could do that, but as I said, this is actually going to be a double header, so this is a good spot to stop for now. This is a nice thing about um, Steamroll Quest, and that's because everything's broken up into nice little chapters. You can just kind of just do a little chapter and then take a break. It's very nice. I highly recommend this game, by the way. So if you, if what you've seen interests you, then please go out and buy it right now. It is. I know it's available on both Steam and Switch, which is the version that I'm playing. So you know, get on that if you want. Yes, but we're going to quit. And, give me just a brief moment.